this could be the surprise of the night. Look at Stuart Friesen. He has done a great job. He's up in the top five. He has this dirt experience. He knows how to come in here. We talked about him at the top of the show, and he's doing the job. Yeah, he's one of the guys you mentioned, Michael, and he is not disappointed. Stayed solid this whole night. Right now, in a great position up in the top five. Stuart Friesen is quickly becoming one of NASCAR's greatest truck series stars. In just a few short years, Friesen went from a superstar on dirt to a championship contender on asphalt. Prior to 2016, little was known about the Canadian dirt track star in mainstream NASCAR until he broke onto the scene in Eldora, driving the number 16 Halmar International Chevy. A driver who in only four short years has gone from a part-time midfielder to a weekly threat to win. Coming seemingly out of nowhere, his rise to the top hasn't been getting much media attention despite his constant improvements and successes. I'm your host, Alex Gallagher, and on this edition of After the Flag, we'll be looking at Stuart Friesen's journey from dirt to Daytona as he quickly is cementing himself as one of NASCAR's greatest overnight success stories. By the end of this video, I hope to answer one question. Where in the world did Stuart Friesen come from? Sit back, strap in, and bolt on your dirt tires, because our story begins on the dirt in upstate New York. Like 90% of Canadians, Friesen grew up playing hockey. However, his love of racing began at his family-owned racetrack in upstate New York called Ransomville Speedway. Being from a border town called Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, Friesen and his family were both close to the American borders as well as close to countless dirt and clay tracks all over the state giving them access to some stiff on-track competition. Starting his career in go-karts, Friesen graduated to the Super Dirt Series racing big block dirt modifieds. Racking up win after win, Friesen would go on to become one of the most dominant drivers in the 2010s. Through turn three and four, one to go this time, Friesen, your leader into turn number one. He'll go to the bottom and shut the door on the Hearn number 20 as they race their way off the corner. Friesen starting to pull away by a car length and a half into turn number three and four. Here comes Hearn on the low side, Friesen on the top side, the big show 11 is Stuart Friesen. Scoring a runner-up points finish in 2016, Friesen has also won at prestigious tracks like Oswego and has won the Syracuse 200 four times. In fact, since 1999, Friesen has made over 900 starts on dirt, winning over 300 races as of 2019. Friesen's racing career would change in 2016 upon meeting car owner Chris Larson. Larson and Friesen would team up for the 2016 Eldora Dirt Derby in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Originally just a one-off start, Larson and sponsor Halmar International saw immense potential in the then 32-year-old Friesen. And with this potential came the decision to field Friesen in five additional races at Bristol, New Hampshire, Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Homestead. Friesen's best finish would come at New Hampshire, where he would finish 13th. 2017 saw Friesen and Larson attempt a full season together with a brand new and renumbered number 52 Chevy. He would also tap former Cup Series owner Tommy Baldwin Jr. as the team's GM. Friesen's first attempt at a full season got off to um, a rocky start, with five DNFs in his first seven races. If Friesen has had any luck in that inaugural season, it was no luck at all. Despite most of the accidents not being Friesen's fault, the team was forced to withdraw from Gateway in Iowa due to the lack of race-ready trucks. However, following the team's return at Kentucky, Friesen's luck began to shift. Friesen would score his first career pole at Eldora, where he would go on to lead 93 laps before finishing second in a heartbreaking finish to Matt Crafton. Friesen would also use that fantastic finish to jumpstart his season, locking a fifth place at New Hampshire, two sixth place finishes at Phoenix and Martinsville, a seventh to end the season at Homestead, as well as leading 10 laps at Talladega. Stuart Friesen's driven to the front, Hermie. It's been really fun to watch this team and driver over the last couple of weeks slowly build into a contending race team. This is a dirt track veteran who won many, many races all over the country. And now he's out front at Talladega, a 2.66 mile super speedway. And he's out front. This is his first ever start in the truck series at this race track. And he's doing a great job today. About a month after Eldora, the team would undergo some serious changes. After parting ways with Tommy Baldwin, Halmar Friesen Racing would take a two-race break before partnering with Maury Gallagher and GMS Racing. Friesen finished 2017 with zero wins, two top fives, five top tens, six DNFs, and 103 laps led. 2018 would see Halmar Friesen Racing partner ever more closely with GMS. So much, in fact, that Johnny Sauter referred to Friesen as his own teammate. 
With the extra support, Friesen was finally able to run all 23 races and see one of the most improved seasons in Truck Series history. In his first seven races in 2018, Friesen would only log two DNFs. However, he would make up for those DNFs with top 10s at Atlanta and Charlotte, and top 5s at Vegas and Kansas. Scoring his second career pole at Texas, Friesen would once again finish second in another heartbreaking finish, this time losing it to Johnny Sauter. He would follow that up with another heartbreaking second to Ben Rhodes at Kentucky, and another runner-up to Johnny Sauter, this time at Bristol. However, Friesen would go on to qualify for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Round of 8, becoming the first Canadian in history to do so. Although being eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, he would finish his 2018 season with no wins, 9 top 5s, 16 top 10s, 2 DNFs, and 188 laps led. I'd like to take a break in this video to mention that while Friesen was becoming a truck series superstar, he was still continuing to run at dirt tracks all across the country, sometimes even on the same weekend as truck events. Friesen also runs a large dirt track team for a handful of up and coming drivers. Friesen's winningest dirt track is Fonda, where he's won a staggering 63 times as of recording this. He's also won 60 times at the Unica Rome Speedway and has also taken victory at Canadian tracks like Autodrome Granby and Oshweekin Speedway. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Ah, uh, 2019, the year the Truck Series welcomed in a new title sponsor, and the year Stuart Friesen would open up a can of whoop ass on the series. Continuing his partnership with GMS Racing, Friesen would open up the season with both a top 10 and a DNF at Daytona. Yeah, I know, strange, right? But nonetheless, Friesen had come to play. Scoring his third career pole at Martinsville, Friesen led 18 laps and finished fifth. He would also suffer another runner-up finish the following week at Texas, adding four more podium finishes before Friesen would finally be a bridesmaid no more. Every year, Friesen got better and better and better at Aldora, meaning it was not an if, but a when Friesen was finally gonna win there. In 2019, he finally sealed the deal. After a lengthy battle with the likes of Chase Briscoe and Sheldon Creed, Friesen held on for his first career NASCAR victory. If he can navigate this into the track mistake free, he will finally do it. The wait is over for Stuart Friesen. He has won at Eldora. The win immediately locked Friesen into the chase, and what's incredible about the win is that Friesen had either finished runner-up or third place 11 times before finally breaking through. However, there was still something the team felt they needed to prove. They felt they needed to finally break the curse and win on an asphalt track. They felt the NASCAR playoffs were the best chance to do so, and boy, were they right. Friesen outlasted all his competitors, and come ISM Raceway, he was already locked into the championship four based on points. However, eh, that wasn't good enough for Friesen. After being penalized for jumping the initial restart on lap one, Friesen fought his way back through the field. Friesen would battle with both Ben Rhodes and Chandler Smith before it all came down to just himself and Brandon Jones. Despite the tough fight from Jones, Friesen had held on for his first win on a paved oval. Stuart Friesen penalized at the start of the race for crossing the line ahead of the pole winner. And he had to go to the tail of the field, and now he comes all the way back. Stuart Friesen wins at ISM. Leading 44 laps, Friesen was the only driver to advance to the final round with a win. In the championship four at Homestead, eh, Friesen would finish 11th and sit 4th in the final standings. Stuart Friesen's journey from dirt to Daytona has been a very strange one, and despite being 36, his career is far from over. Friesen announced in late 2019 that Halmar Friesen Racing has switched to Toyota for 2020 after spending the last four seasons with Chevrolet. The technical alliance will also change from GMS Racing to Kyle Busch Motorsports, who will supply the team with some technical help. With the switch to Toyota and the alliance with KBM, it is more than likely that Stuart Friesen will take on a mentorship role with young Canadian driver Raphael Lassard. Raphael Lassard will be taking over the number 4 for KBM, vacated by Todd Gilliland. And with a driver like Stuart Friesen working with a driver like Raphael Lassard, it is quite possible these two could form a deadly combination in the Gander Outdoors Truck Series in 2020. In addition to his long portfolio of dirt and stock cars, Friesen has also tried his hand at a handful of late model races as well. In 2018, he would make his Cars Tour debut at Nashville, finishing second to Casey Roderick. He would then follow that up with another second place finish at Bristol, this time to fellow Canadian Raphael Lassard. 
Friesen also ran the 2018 Snowball Derby, his last recorded late model start. Despite qualifying 14th, Friesen was taken out in an early race 7 car pileup, finishing 34th. Friesen has also done plenty of charity work in his spare time, both on and off the track, most notably during the Dover NASCAR weekend, where Friesen and Halmar Friesen Racing helped raise over $70,000 for autism awareness, as well as running a very special puzzle piece paint scheme. See the school you're looking at right there, Crossroads Center for Children. That is Stuart Friesen's son, Parker, who was diagnosed on the autism spectrum just after his first birthday. You saw Stuart Friesen's truck covered in puzzle pieces. Each one of those puzzle pieces represents a donation that will go to that school. Together, they raised more than $70,000 for that school, for the cause. Over the course of the winter, Stuart Friesen announced he would be making his NASCAR Pinty Series debut at the first ever Series Dirt Race at Oswegan Speedway. In partnership with 22 Racing, Friesen will run the number 24 Quickwick Mr. Transmission Chevrolet. With both top-notch dirt experience and the backing of one of the Pinty Series' strongest teams, Friesen will look to make an impression and hopefully make history by winning the Pinty Series' first ever dirt race. And that's all I got. Thank you so much for tuning into the second edition of After the Flag. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as turn notifications on so you get updated every time I post a new video. Believe me, I really do appreciate every single person that watches my videos. It really does help me out, and I can't thank you enough for tuning in. I'm Alex Gallagher, and I'll see you next time.